The Power of Women Through Media As public figures, women are afforded opportunities to educate, inspire, and bring about platforms of change and important issues not only locally but internationally and nationally out to the community. And it's with my hopes and intentions to share my platform and my stage here of Pathways of Paradise, not only as a TV show, but a place to uplift not only young women, but women across the different sectors and markets, to share with others their work, their platform, and their inspiration. And so I brought together a group of public figures to do just that. We have Rachel Kawakami. Hi. <laughs> and we have Eva Lani. And Eva Lani, I'm going to ask you to say your beautiful Hawaiian name. Aloha mai kako o vau o Eva Lani. Kuali i ka ho'ohanohano. And we have an inventor and researcher, Dr. Sandra Rose Michael. Aloha. You know, I thought it was really important to continue to share not only the things that in my life inspire me, but the people that I get to work with on a daily basis out in the community, and especially the women that are out there on the front lines as public figures and what their platforms are. And so, Rachel, I wanted to start with you, and I wanted you to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and, you know, why are you sitting here with this beautiful crown and sash? What's going on, or who are you? Well, first off, I'm Rachel Kawakami. And um, I guess, for first of all, how I got started in this pageant, I was actually told I should run in this pageant that I um, took the title for. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking, why not go for it? Like, I didn't know much about pageants when I first started, so I was just like, oh, let's just give it a shot. And, you know, I'll put my best into it, and whatever happens, happens. Now, you are currently in high school, is it? Yes, I am. And how old are you? I'm 16. What has this journey been like, and uh, how did you have, I mean, that takes a lot of courage to get up there in front of people you don't know. So how did you do all this? Ooh, I have to say God has really helped me through this. You know, that's my backbone. And, um, yeah, that's that. You know, uh, one of the things I was really, really taken by is uh, the teen portion, because you are a segment of the Miss America organization, that at such an early age, you folks are not only doing community service, but you've actually started to build a platform of interest that you're trying to educate others about. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Yes, my platform is concussion education and awareness. Um, I know it firsthand because I just uh, suffered from a concussion last year. What's it been like, and uh, you had shared a little bit with me yesterday, what has that been like, and what has, I mean, if I look at you, I would never know that you went through such a thing, so just share a little bit of what that's been like, and how have you pulled everything together to be sitting here and sharing your story, and with such confidence and poise? Yeah, so first of all, doing this pageant, I learned how to have confidence and poise, but through my concussion, that one was very crazy and scary and nerve-wracking because I didn't know, I wasn't educated until after I went through the processes. And what actually, just so the viewers out there that don't know you, uh, what caused the issue or the concern? What happened? I was actually, all right, I'm a cheerleader for mm -hmm. Kubuku High School. And while we were in practice, we were practicing new stunts and, you know, doing the usual. And I suffered from a question from a stunt gone bad. Mm. So you actually had an injury and uh, was there some downside or downtime or how did this affect you? Oh, it affected me greatly. While I'm currently a student, well, last year, you know, I was taking honors classes and so I had to push myself extra hard so I can finish my classes and, uh, you know, having the concussion really was a block for me, but I overcame it and got to pursue everything. I so, so part of your platform is uh, because sometimes you know we get so busy, and especially uh, you know you're you're doing a lot not only with your schoolwork but the activities, you know. So so part of this is uh, helping others to help uh, prevent going through what you went through. Yes, and also learning more about it and how important it really is because I think people really underestimate how serious it is. You know, and uh, 
I sort of wanted to ask you, Dr. Michaels, because you've actually done some research in mm -hmm. that area. Can you share a little bit about... Uh, yeah. Oh, the, con concussion awareness or brain trauma is very, very common in the sports fields. And, of course, uh, appropriate that we talk about that today. I think it's Super Bowl Sunday as we're recording this. And so, for example, we had uh, John Brody had had a lot of brain trauma, obviously. This is a big issue in, with the football players. And so he's used the technology, the bioscalar technology, to recover from the stroke uh, that he had from brain trauma. But also we do have um, some different things because we've also had injuries from sports inju injuries where there's been a severed spinal cord, which you could have easily had. You know, it's a broken your neck or a severed spinal cord. You could have been paraplegic. Uh, and so uh, one of our doctors, Dr. Greg Gerber, who's a specialist in rehab medicine, um, medical director of uh, Houston Memorial Hospital System, had somebody with fixed neuro deficit, severed spinal cord medically, and he had full function using the bioscalar technology for the regeneration repair. Went back to full function within two months. But I'll show you some of this. We're, we have a little bit of a PowerPoint. Uh, this first one is bioelectrography developed out of Russia. Again, we're talking about Russia with the, with the Russian Grand Priory here. But um, this is a before, and this was a, a, a scientist who had brain trauma from being mugged as a teenager. This is a before, and he utilized the energy enhancement system or the bioscalar technology that is installed in uh, the medical school here with Dr. Terry Shintani, who's uh, chair of CAM at University of Hawaii Med School. So this is installed, this is part of some of his research as well. But this second one shows, you see how that looks like an explosion off from the head? This is the release of that trauma. Now this particular scientist had, um, had ringing in the ears that had developed tinnitus. And that was, and his tinnitus was all of a sudden gone. He'd been only in the technology less than a half hour. So these are sessions of an, an energy, bioactive energetic environment that allows the body to repair and regenerate and specifically works very, very well with the cranial nerves and brain function. So this is, uh, far infrared digital imaging thermography it's also called and you see the before now on on the before you see all that red and the orange you see a lot of sinus this is somebody that was having migraines which also would be very common after concussions or after um, brain trauma so you see that before the red the orange is inflammation uh, inflammation is pain and you see this after he had spent um, roughly approximately six to seven hours, two or three sessions in the bioscalar technology. And you see how much do you think the brain can function so much better without all that inflammation and the pain is, is obviously cleared. So uh, increased brain function, obviously the head's, you know, it also synchronizes right and left brain hemispheres. And this is EEG studies out of uh, Korea. And again, this is a before and after 10 minutes of exposure to these hyper healthy energetic fields. So you see in the second one is cohesive coherent brain function. We also have a researcher, Dr. Nancy White in Houston that's utilized our technology for all variety of brain um, trauma um, and things like, like that as far as also um, learning challenges and after strokes. We've had full recovery from paralysis after strokes, all variety of brain injury. But you see how much the, the brain can respond when the body has the right energy. There isn't anything the body won't heal. This goes back to the power that made the body heals the body. And, and thank you, Eric. That's the end of the um, the slides I was going to show. So this is actually an area that is not discussed enough that um, mm -hmm. because you know we want to get out there and be active and be healthy but it's the need to do it in a safe manner is what I'm hearing and what I'm mm -hmm. taking from this. 
What, what would you want to tell teens? Because I think it's important, you know, they're getting accused of being so sediment or sitting or whatever the word, you know, that they're so inactive. And yet most of the teens and young people I meet are out there active. What, what would you want to say to them or what information do you feel could help them to be more aware of uh, preventing concussions? Well, first of all, you should really learn about it. And if you have a concussion, you know, really... Um, what's it called? <laughs> Sorry. You really, um, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, well mean, I know that uh, sometimes the surfers, you know, they'll go and they, mm -hmm. and, and especially the younger men, they want to be so macho. And so if they hit their head, they don't want to tell anybody that yeah. maybe they're having a headache. Yeah, they may not realize till later, you know, because with, um, for example, whiplash or some of the different brain injuries, the symptoms don't show up till later. And so, but, but we also want to support people in that, knowing that there are solutions too, that to have a greater taking more care of the body and the awareness of, of the damage that could be there. If you hadn't gotten um, somebody to tell you you had a concussion, nobody initially told you, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and there could have been more damage. So I just love how you're really putting together this uh, platform to start to educate others and then you'll actually be competing uh, statewide is that correct yes that is what are some of the goals and what are some of the ways that you prepare for state well first I need to really make sure I can publicly speak and answer questions so this so is good this <laughs> is a really good practice actually <laughs> and then um, I just really help uh, learn to really grow in myself and learn who I am and hopefully I can carry that through all my experiences. And that's what I heard, that the judges really want to get to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's, it's important to be true to yourself. And you know, what I love is uh, having this opportunity as a platform for everyone to speak. When we started talking, uh, Ivalani, you actually use multimedia in a very tremendous way. And I wanted you to share uh, not only how culturally you're really educating others, Tell us a little bit about your platform and your current work. My platform is Kahoi Kaika Anai Kamaori Ola Kanaka Mao Kiao Papaho or Kamano Kapapaho, which is strengthening cultural diversity through the power of media. And right now, um, I work with OEV TV. It's the only Hawaiian language network in the nation. And through my experience working with OEV TV, I was able to work not only with the Hawaiian community, but communities within the continental U.S. as well as internationally. Um, I had the privilege to go to Norway for the first time and coming from a warm environment and going <laughs> to the cold environment, I found a connection between the cultural, um, the cultures, excuse me, there and what I um, have learned here in Hawaii that Language is what ties our culture together, and in understanding that that's the base of our culture, we were able to connect on that level and create wonderful pieces. It sounds like you do a lot of bridging yes. of communities. You know, uh, our show today is titled The Power of Women Through Media. Mm -hmm. How would we say that in the Hawaiian language? Similar to my platform, it's Kamana o Kavahine Makiao Papaho, so the power of women in media. And you had stated, and I think this is just tremendous, that not only here locally in our state, but nationally, but actually internationally, this is the first Hawaiian channel. How would we find your channel if we wanted to go and view and see what some of your topics were? Of course. Um, we cover a range of things, um, like you said, here locally, internationally. And you can find us on ch digital channel 326 or online at oiv.tv. That's O-I-W-I dot TV. Why do you think it's important to educate others on your culture? I know my culture best. Uh, I grew up around it. Um, and I think that not only am I educating people about my own culture, but also how to strengthen their own. Um, I went to an ANA conference 
um, in Washington, D.C. this past year. And what does that stand for? Um, it's the Native American um, mm -hmm. program. And I was very happy that I could speak in front of a bunch of people and influence them through our work, how language, how culture can be shown through media. And I was pleased to know that a lot of people came up to me after my presentation and had a lot to ask. I mean, I know I'm very young in the program, um, in media, and having this title as Miss Kahala in the Miss America organization and being a representative of OEB TV, I think the two can be bridged together and I can help share to more people outside of the Native American community um, how media can be used to strengthen our cultures, not only in America but around the world. You know, uh, we just had the other week Martin Luther King, uh, a lot of different things in the islands and I think Hawaii is blessed to have so much diversity. How do you feel not only your Miss Kahala platform but also your work in the media can bring about more equality? Like I said, um, Actually, I'm going to take a step back. Um, Hawaii is, I'd say, a microscopic um, view of what America is, what the world is. There's a lot of cultures. There's a lot of diversity um, around the world. And I think that through media, through working together, you know, it's basically going back to the idea of sharing the Aloha spirit. And I think that if we can touch a little people at a time, that the aloha will be spread, cultures will be spread, and you know we can thrive as a whole. Because the idea in Hawaii of aloha spirit is looking at the greater good. And so if we work towards that one goal of looking at the greater good, then everyone in the world can live at peace. I wanted to know if you could share a little bit about your future goals. What projects, what do you have in the mix? <laughs> With OEB TV? With your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I plan to continue my education um, upon receiving the scholarship for Argus University. I will be starting in March. Um, my master's in science, master's of science in organizational leadership, um, taking the business route, and then I plan to continue on to law school at um, Richardson School of Law. And hopefully with my JD and my business and background, as well as my um, background in journalism and media, <laughs> that I can help maybe create or expand, extend from OEB TV and continue the Hawaiian language and media to touch other cultures. Mm -hmm. It's really, it, you're definitely one to keep an eye on and <laughs> we'll be watching for all your great work. Rachel, what are some of the goals you've set for yourself? You're starting to have a really busy year. Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> I think my first goal, first of all, is to just really get out there and push my platform and, uh, you know, just yeah, experience, making a lifetime experience. And then uh, you'll be going to States, is it? Yes. When is that? That's in April. April. Oh, so actually, that reminds me, you folks have a major fundraiser coming up. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I think it's March 3rd. It's it, Sunday, it, March 3rd at the Old Spaghetti Factory. Yeah. Well, Old Spaghetti House in Ward. And really what it is is, me, Rachel, and our other um, pageant sister, Jolene Iwanek, we will be there to present ourselves and to just get along with the community who come to support us. And um, yeah, there'll be food, entertainment, and a side and auction. And this goes to help uh, you folks with all the different things because I think people don't realize what it takes to be in a pageant. You know, you just don't walk on stage and. You know, but there's there's all different aspects and things that are needed to make you look like that perfect person at that <laughs> moment. You know, so uh, tell us one interesting fact about yourself, Ivanani. An interesting fact about myself that maybe nobody. <laughs> yeah. Well, I obviously, know. I can alala hobei. I'm fluent in the Hawaiian language. I. Uh, started in kindergarten and learned with my mom all the way throughout high school, continued in college and not um, have the opportunity to work in media. Um, it's a new avenue for Hawaiian language students who are interested and I'm just proud to be here representing my communities um, as Miss Kahala.
Wow, that's really great. You know, Dr. Michaels, you have for years always supported the Miss Hawaii program. Mm -hmm. And the Miss America and Miss Hawaii gives out some of the largest scholarships. And I believe Miss America gives out the most money throughout the world of any organization. You know, you've always been there behind the scenes whether people know it or not. But I wanted you to share what's one exciting fact that we may not know about you, Dr. Oh. Michaels, besides that you're great at uplifting women. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, part of it is that passion. You really want to find your mission, your vision, your passion, and step forward with that. And, and we've done that globally, certainly. The, against all odds, we have actually gone out there in, and lectured with the UN, with uh, ministries of health all over the world, and this kind of thing. But also, I really want to acknowledge both of you um, because of the sharing of aloha is so important at this time on the planet. It's aloha that heals the world, really, literally. But the power of the language, the power of the Hawaiian language. Now, we talk about unified field, fields, cohesive, coherent unified fields, standing columnar waves, and and informational and intentional fields. Well, the Hawaiian language is, that, is also, scalar is fifth dimensional by definition. The Hawaiian language itself is designed to be multidimensional. It carries many levels of meaning. And there are no words for separation. It is for creating ohana, the oneness with the breath and the love of all life, the aloha. And it is that spirit that heals the world. But there are no words for separation. Everything is communion. It's sacred community and ho'oponopono, right relationships. And so the importance of sharing your aloha with the world and with your beauty, because your beautiful voice is for aloha. I really want to thank you for that, because it is in this time, it's the women stepping forward that really creates the balance. You know, we are, we are the mothers, we're the nurturers, we're the healers. And when the women speak, the world will listen, and we will be the ones who create peace. Well, and we're also smart at all the other areas and at the security tables. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Ambassador Chowdhury, is, who is with the United Nations, speaks about that, and that's why I want to sort of to segue into that, that, you know, it's not only at the peace tables that the women are important and mm -hmm. valid, but also at the security tables, too. And so for me, I just feel like I get the easy job of just <laughs> continuing to recognize and let women share. And even on a shoestring budget, we, we've <laughs> done it. And so I totally understand the need that, you know, this is just really wonderful that on Sunday, March 3rd, and it's at lunch, 11.30, at the Old Spaghetti Factory, that the community can come out and support you folks so that you can get to that next level, you know, that you can focus. Because what I find that, you know, there's so many little details you folks need to take care of that mm -hmm. if you have that support, whether monetarily or someone mm -hmm. gives you gowns or, you know, what are some of the things that the community, what ways... Um, you know, if they can't make it to the luncheon at the Spaghetti Factory, what other needs or ways can they support you ladies? We're also part of the Children's Miracle Network, um, mm -hmm. and if anyone would like to donate, they could go through our director. Um, there are so many ways that people can support. I know just um, morally, moral support is <laughs> a lot needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when is the actual um, Miss Hawaii? Is that still in June? Yes, mm -hmm. it's the beginning of June. I believe it's um, Saturday, June 8th. And it's going to be held, you know, this year where you're going to Convention, gonna, Convention Center. Center. So not only people have an opportunity to come out and hear some great talents like we did last night. I mean, mm -hmm. I thought it was the best show in town. It had and, a nice variety of yeah, talents. Definitely. It was really good. And I, mm -hmm. to me, that's a worthwhile cause. Yes, and, we really want to uh, <laughs> invite people to please step forward and support you know, support the community support for, you know, you are our future. And, you, you know, future you make it leaders. a beautiful future. Mm -hmm. You know, we want you to be the strongest, most influential that you can possibly be in your message to the world. And I think we 
couldn't have done it without the community support. Um, I think the fundraiser not only is a good opportunity for us um, financially, but it's a great opportunity for us to meet our supporters because, you know, we have so much mahalo, we have so much um, appreciation for any type of support coming through, and without that support, we couldn't have made it this far. And I just wanted to share a little bit. You folks do go out and do public speaking, is that correct? Yes. yes. <laughs> now, if someone wanted to get a hold of one of you beautiful young ladies, how would we get a hold of you if we wanted you to come speak at our event? How would we do that? Through our director, um, Ann Mata, and I believe you have her information. Do we have her phone number? I, uh, there's there, there. several yeah. ways. You could either contact her at 808-342-1515. One six, or uh, pageant. This is an email pageant p r o d o one at aol dot com, okay. and it is important to know that Miss Hawaii is a nonprofit scholarship program, mm -hmm. and uh, so any way that someone could get a hold of you folks, and what are the different types of things or subjects we could expect if we called upon you, Ivalani, to talk about? <laughs> Obviously, the Hawaiian culture, the Hawaiian language. Um, I also entertained my um, talent at Miss Kahala was singing and playing the ukulele, and I enjoy doing that. I also dance hula, so <laughs> we might be calling <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. Uh, if someone also got a hold of Anne, who is your director, also is that correct? Yes, that's uh, what would some of the things that you could possibly uh, share with us? You know, just being aware of. And concussions and really being educated and taking the right precautions to them. Wow, I just feel so inspired and it's such an honor to continue to watch each of you folks grow and I can't wait to see where you are in five years. <laughs> it's like, well you're going to be with me somewhere globally. We'll be doing more <laughs> stuff together. I, I just really feel that. And Dr. Michaels, I want to thank you. We have just a short <laughs> moment. Uh, is there anything you want to share quickly? I just want to thank you, Tina, for doing such a great job of really serving the community. Again, it's about the ohana mm -hmm. and that unity that we can share, you know, the, the communion of us coming together and sharing. And uh, thank you. Yep. And I want to thank the Miss America and the Miss Hawaii organization. And let's all keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.